So welcome to part one of this web design series where we're going to be looking at making a complete website from start to finish using industry standards. So just in a few lessons, you're going to have a beautiful website. We'll be using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and an appropriate IDE. We'll also look at Bootstrap. It'll be fully functional with exciting features, styled with industry standards. And we'll also look at something called Git and version control. I'll also show you how to actually host your website and even get a free domain name. Now, just a bit of context before we begin. My name is Ruth Marvin, and there on the Teams page next to me is my husband, Jonathan. Together, we run a number of websites and web businesses, among them, of course, Test and Track and TeachingComputing.com. I also teach in the classroom. Now, we've had considerable experience with actually building, developing, designing websites, and we'll share some of those tips and tricks with you. But of course, the main question is, what will you do? With web design skills, if you have an internet connection and of course a computer, the sky's the limit. And that's going to be the real interesting question. What will you do? So as we go along and even at this point, if you could start to think about what your business idea or your website will be, who you're doing it for and what problem you're solving. Now, before we begin, there's something I'd like to show you on any job site that you might look on and a couple of terms that you might come across and it would be good to discuss them and to know what they mean. Now, for instance, if you have typed in front end developer, and of course, if you were a student, if you're just starting out, you might be looking for temporary or contract work. And it gives you an idea of what you might be paid. Now, I could also type in this word called full stack. Let's type in this because these are some of the languages you're, you're going to be using. Um, and again, let's go to temporary and contract and you can see JavaScript, HTML, CSS, but you also see this word full stack. So let's have a look at what that word means. Full stack developer. What does it mean to be a front end developer and what in contrast is a full stack developer? So you can see that there's tremendous potential, but of course, money isn't everything. And I'd say that the greatest ideas, the best business ideas, are ones that solve a problem. It could be bringing people together, connecting people. It could be providing information and giving help. So be thinking about your business idea. Coming back to that term that you saw, front end and full stack, there's more to web design than you might think. But what we're going to be focusing on in this series is front end design. Now, any website, has a front end, and that's what you see, and a back end, which would involve the database and connectivity, things like login and sign up. But we're going to be looking at the front end, the beautiful bits, the, the visual bits, and that involves HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Invariably, every website in the world that is interactive and dynamic will use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it tells you over here that HTML is for structure, CSS, is for styling and JavaScript is for interactivity and functionality. One of the main questions you're going to have to ask before you make your website is who are you designing this for? And you might want to use things like visualization diagrams or wireframes and storyboards. And do look up these terms and think about how you're going to come up with your design for your website. Of course, the bigger a website is, it's much more important to plan it. But even if you're building a small website, it's good practice and it might be important for your coursework to actually think about designing it. It's always about the user. So think first, who is your target audience? Who is the end user? You could also use, like I've listed here, things like mood boards, a site map, which provides an entire structure of your website. Also consider legal issues. What sort of images and videos are you going to be using? And I'm going to look as we go along at things like Trello and Gantt charts, which allow you to plan your time and have your tasks managed well. Something you might have considered in your design is using what's called a mood board. Now, if you are creating your website for a client, that means you're not actually making it yourself for yourself with an end user in mind, but you are making it for, say, a hairdresser, or you're making it for your grandma who has a, a wonderful catering business, you might want to consider or discuss with your client what they would like the website to be like. And one of the 
Key ways in which this can be done is using mood boards. And a mood board is a collage or a collection of sample ideas to create a mood. You can also just simply interview them. You might want to provide them with a questionnaire. Get them to think about things like house styles, what colours and fonts they would like on their website. So do discuss these things if you are creating a website for someone else, like a client. Now at this point, I'm going to show you two tips and tricks that we've found completely invaluable, and you will too. The first one is a sort of glorified to-do list, or it's an organisational tool that's going to really, really help you. And you can use it for all kinds of things, uh, completing your work, or obviously if you were actually making a website. Now, this is an example of one of our boards. So if I was to show you a test and track Trello board, you can see that we have lots of lists and different cards with different tasks. Now, here's a quick sort of new board that I've just made here. And how Trello works, I won't give you a complete tutorial on it, but it's completely free. You can set up lists and inside a list, you can set up a card, which is essentially a task. Do task one, task three. You can click inside a card and you can write comments. You can assign labels or assign a person to a task. You can add detailed descriptions, upload files, images, screenshots. And of course, you can actually say when something is completed or if you're watching it to see if it's completed. It's very clever and it's very, very useful. A great organizational tool. The second thing is something called inspect element. And when you first discover it, it's like magic. And even as you become an advanced developer, it's something you'll be using all the time. So to demonstrate that, let's go to the BBC News site, which is always exciting. So I click on the BBC News site and I'm going to scroll down to find a heading. So, for instance, how will UK vaccinate millions or any of these elements on the screen? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the page and select that option there, which says inspect. What it gives you is the code associated with the website. So all of this, as you hover over it, as you can see, I'm going to close this down. This is related to the styles, which we'll learn about later. But this bit is showing me the actual HTML code. So if I hover over that, it shows me the associated element. So for instance, that, if I click on this arrow here and click on this, it shows me the actual bit of code which is associated with that text. I'm going to click on that and say edit with HTML. I'm going to change this headline to all back to normal. I'm going to click out of it and you can see that my headline is now on the BBC News. Now, of course, this is not actually changed on the server side. It's just on the client side, which means in your browser. And this is really a tool. You might be able to trick your friends or your family with it, but really it's a tool for development. And when you're designing a website, you might want to figure out where something is or how something works. And a great way to change it is in the client side, where you can play around with design and development. So you're probably asking, what do I do now? So here are a couple of six steps that might help you get started. To begin with, of course, think about your website. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be for? Have a title ready, which is always a good start. What's the title of your website gonna be? Think of the links, which gives you a sense of the structure of the website, a home page, a contact page, what else, a games page, etc. And that's gonna form what's called your navigation bar. I'd like you to look up these terms, which are extremely important in web design and planning visualization diagrams, mood boards, wireframes, and sitemaps. You might want to write about them, produce a PowerPoint, even make them if this is part of your coursework before you actually create your website. I'd also like you to check out the inspect element tool, see if you can look at different elements on a website, change things, and see how it works. And you might want to actually check out Trello and make your own to-do list. It is completely free. Here are a couple of useful sites. You might want to pause the screen and bookmark them. They'll be very useful and we'll be referring to them a lot. In the next lesson, you're going to be starting with the basics and very quickly in a couple of minutes, but certainly by lesson three, you'll have some very stunning looking websites already forming on your screen. So something to look forward to. See you in lesson two.